a hectic day in Hamden. Well, at least at the TD Bank Sports Center. John Alba, Maury Hirsch Gordon here for another episode of The Rebound presented by Q30 Sports on Q30Television.com. Maury, a women's game to kick us off, a men's game following up. The women's game, one of the best I've seen in my four years here. Quinnipiac defeating Canisius 88 to 85 in overtime. Give us your thoughts on that game. John, a lot of emotion coming in. Uh, this senior class has really been extremely important to this Bobcats program. Now 96 wins together. Uh, the starting five uh, and Shana Earl off the bench. Uh, I've gotten to an NCAA tournament, have won a conference championship. And then uh, j j just into the game, you know, Canisius came out firing. They, they shot 60% from the field for the game. They shot over 61% from three. They couldn't miss. They played the perfect game. But you know what? The undefeated team still comes out on top, and we're still mind-boggled. Did you ever think that there was going to be a time where Quinnipiac would actually get outshot this season? Yeah, I know you came over and mentioned to me, mentioned that to me in one of the media timeouts. I, I don't think that they could ever be outshot. I thought that was a game Quinnipiac would I thought that's a game Quinnipiac would, would have, uh, a game where they would shoot 60%, 70% from three because they have that capability. But for Canisius to do that on, on the road, tremendous job by the Golden Griffs. you got to tip your cap. Val Driscoll, Nikolai Ossigard, all these players get involved, but one person who struggled for at least the last 10, 15 games had the big moment. Jasmine Martin hit, hitting a three from about 27, 28 feet out as the team was down three with the clock expiring. Just one of those gamer moments, wasn't it? Definitely. Uh, four turnovers, like you said, not her game, not her day. Uh, she has improved greatly on def uh, tremendously on defense this season, but uh, Boo Abshire dribbles down the court, right wing, Jasmine Martin catches, fires, good, 26, 27 feet, John. I mean, that shot was from, uh, from main campus. Wallingford main campus, whatever you want to call it. It was a long way away. Magic number down to one now for Quinnipiac, and you got to think, Maybe there's a changing of the guard, or at least this season there is in the MAC on the women's end. We head over to the men's side now. 60 to 57, Iona defeats Quinnipiac. This was a great game. Iona did not play its best game. Quinnipiac uh, really had a strong defensive effort going on. The Gales, though, they're just so good, aren't they? They are very good, John. They average almost 82 points a game, and they still find a way to win with 60 on the road. David Laurie, two personal fouls in the first half, sits out for, for a lot of it. Quinnipiac builds a five-point lead at the break, but what does Laurie do? He scores 12 points in the second half, doesn't come out. A.J. English, uh, Cedric Casimir down the stretch. The Gales are too tough for anyone in the MAC, in my opinion. Quinnipiac goes two for 19 from three. Quinnipiac head coach Tom Moore said in the press conference, when you're getting held defensively on the inside, that's just what you do. Do you agree with that? Um, I, I think that's what you do, uh, especially when you have the likes of Chase Daniels, who finished with 12 points and 9 rebounds, uh, the likes of Usman Drame, 16 points, 18 rebounds. Um, I think that was the game plan, yes, but you got to still keep your – uh, you got to still stay respected fr from from beyond the arc. Usman Drame had great passes, kick, kicked out. And like Tom Moore said, 15, 16 of those are good shots. They just didn't fall today. Quinnipiac nodded up with Canisius now for that number five spot in the MAC, which is the all-important spot because if you finish in the top five, you get that first round by. Both these teams are going to have a chance, at least, for a good showing in Albany, it would seem, as more, you got to think, even this loss for Quinnipiac wasn't all that bad of a loss. No, it wasn't all that bad. Great crowd on a Sunday afternoon, coming in, riding a couple-game winning streak, J just fell short. Uh, two for 19, they're going to shoot the ball better. Uh, they were in the bonus with over 12 minutes to go in the second half. They might have to attack more. They're going to look at a lot of film. They still have four games left. We were looking. Two teams, uh, they play in, in Canisius, who's tied with them at 8-8, eight and, eight, and Siena, who's 7-9 and nine right below. Uh, they also go on the road to Lawrenceville, New Jersey, this Thursday night against Ryder. They also play Manhattan at Dratty to finish the season. So four games with four great opponents, two at home, two on the road, one on ESPNU. They're definitely going to have their place uh, to show their Bobcats basketball. That's all the time we have here on this edition of The Rebound. If you're interested in finding out more about Q30 Sports, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, at Q30 Sports, and check us out online at www.q30television.com. For Maury Hirsch scoring, I'm John Alba. We'll see you next time.